um, yeah, I'm going to carry on talking about the heart um, and about brokenness, that lovely word, <laughs> brokenness. Um, and hopefully by the end of it, you'll understand that God is looking for brokenness in all of us, that he wants us to have a broken heart. Um, and what the real definition of a broken heart is. Um, could someone find um, Psalm 34 verse 18? And someone else find Psalm 51 verse 17, please. Yeah, and um, 34, 18. 34, 18. Yeah. <laughs> the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart, and save of such as be of a contrite spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. That's but, it. That's okay. It. <laughs> yeah, uh, the sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. O oh God, thou wilt not despise. Mm. Yeah, so... um. <laughs> Some questions that I want to answer. Um, firstly, what is a broken heart? Um, uh, a lot of us might, uh, you know, in our mind when you say broken heart, you might kind of picture like a, a love heart with like a jagged line down the middle, like, you know, heart, heartache, heartbreak. But, you know, from God's point of view, the biblical viewpoint is, is nothing like that. So, um, so I want to ask, what is, what is a broken heart? Uh, what is brokenness? Um, secondly, um, what is the purpose of, of brokenness? If God wants us broken, why, why does he want that? Why is he looking for brokenness in us? Why does he do that? Um, number three, um, defining the difference between a broken heart and a wounded heart. Because um, there is a difference and I think mm -hmm. we can tend to get the two mixed up. Um, so just clarifying the difference. Um, and finally, how does brokenness come about? It's two ways brokenness comes about. Um, uh, and defining what breaking point means um, and how we reach breaking point. Okay, um, so a broken heart, definition of a broken heart. Um, I mean, it says there, um, a broken heart and those that have a contrite spirit Basically, broken and contrite are the same thing. Contrite is like the superlative of broken. Um, contrite means humble, repentant. Um, in the Greek, it actually means to be bruised, smitten, crushed. Um, if you've got a contrite heart, it means that your pride's been completely humbled mm. by like a consciousness of, of sin. So, you, so you're re repentant and you kind of... It's like you've been floored by God. The rug's been pulled out from under you. You realise, you know, you're at the end of yourself. Um, and you see your true condition before God. Um, and, yeah, broken heart is three things. I'd say three words. It's a heart that's surrendered, a heart that's submitted, and a heart that's yielded to God. So... Can we all say that together? Surrendered, Surrendered submitted, and yielded, yielded yeah. to God. Yeah. So I want to be surrendered and submitted and yielded to you, Jesus. Um, so surrender, um, what does surrender mean? Um, surrender means to give up, to die to, um, to deny yourself. Okay, so what do we need to give up? Um, um, we need to give up things that we trust in more than God so because that's idolatry isn't it? anything that we have before God is an idol we need to give that up we need to give up belief give up fear give up our pride give up our weaknesses our self-strength or our weaknesses um, give up insecurity die to um, what do we need to die to need to die to what we want, we need to die to how we do things, we need to die to old habits, um, die to our flesh, um, and die to the old man. Um, and there's a, there's a lot 
in the New Testament about scriptures about dying, <laughs> um, not just Jesus dying, but as dying. Um, uh, if somebody could find Galatians 2.20 and read that out, please. crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live, in the flesh I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Amen. Um, Colossians 3 verse 5, somebody? members which are upon the earth fornication uncleanness inordinate affection evil conceptions and covetousness which is idolatry yeah um uh, so, oh actually could somebody also read luke 9 23 So I want, to, I want to ask the question, how how many times do we have to die? How many times do we have to deny ourselves? And this scripture answers that. Then he said to them all, If anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. So how often do we have to die? Daily. Daily, yeah. It's, it's a daily thing. It's like a daily decision um, to put your flesh to death. We do it. Um, put to death your members which are on the earth. You know, it's, it's something that we do um, and it has to be every day because like Scott was saying the flesh is like is there it's ready to put up a fight every day so we have to put it down yeah so got to be strong willed about that because if you're not the flesh will dominate you um, see so yeah, I'm saying a broken heart is surrendered submitted and yielded so that's surrendered and um, submitted um, if you're in submission to someone, you put yourself under them. Um, so to be submitted means that you give up control. Um, so if you're submitted to God, you're letting God control your life. Um, so you're not in the driving seat, you're not in control. Um, so you make God like mm -hmm. in charge, he's, he's your all in all. Mm. Um, and it's like, Lord, whatever you want. I submit to your will, whatever you want to do, you know, we need to get to that place of, you know, it's, it's, it's over to you, Lord, you're in charge. Um, oh, <laughs> there's, a, there's a song um, that we used to sing in the, in the church that we, we were first in, um, then it goes, <laughs> um, the obedience song. Yeah, okay. I can't sing, so... I was trying to sing. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it goes, obedience, love for the Father, obedience, my highest worship, obedience, rising with Jesus, no other way but the way of the Lord. And I, I love that song. Um, <laughs> obedience, love for the Father, obedience, my highest worship, obedience, rising with Jesus, no other way but the way of the Lord. Um, yeah, yeah, and um, oh, there's an, there's another one. I'm gonna have to. I can, actually, I can I can teach you this one because it's quite easy. Um, the words are, um, I want your will, Lord, come take mine. I want your will, Lord, come take mine. Everything that I've got in your hands, now I drop. I want your will, Lord, to come take mine. Do you sing that? <laughs> I want your will, Lord, come take mine. I want your will, Lord, come take mine. Everything that I've got in your hands, now I 
drop. I want your will, Lord. Come take mine. Yeah, these are these are songs of surrender. Yeah, I want your mind, Lord. So it's it's we we give ourselves away to Him. We we surrender ourselves. We submit to Him, and He gives Himself to us. And that's what we want, isn't it? So that, that's the exchange that we want. More of him, less of, less of us. There was a song just briefly called Let Me Love Without Honour. Written by <laughs> Watchman Lee, the Chinese guy that was good. Song. I won't say that. <laughs> 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 Super um, sensitive. Okay. Right, so anyway, submission is really, really, really important. It's really important in the church and everywhere you go, you should be looking for who you're in submission to, you know, be it in your job or be it in your church. You should always. Like within that field, within that arena, you should find out your um, boundaries, you know, and we should all be in, in submission. Um, it's it's very important. It's how how like it works in the spiritual realm as well. Um, that's a realm, <laughs> realm. Um, angels know it, and you know, demons know it because they're in rank, they're under authority, mm -hmm. and if we're not under authority, they see it. Um, um, they can get in there. It's like it's an open door to the devil. Um, James 4, 7. Kind of on that one, you said on Sunday afternoon when I mm. deliverance on Sunday, you said you, you, would, you just look like Trevor there. Yeah, yeah, I saw Trevor in you. Yeah, yeah your spiritual father. I'm in submission so, yeah, yeah. So, yeah. figures it's submission strength. Mm. Yeah. So it covers my ministry. I'm mm. going to be like them. Praise the Lord. I want mm. to be not a clone, but as he imitates Christ, he's yeah. my covering. I imitate mm. him, and that's how the church works with me. And God was speaking to me yeah. about this the other day in regard mm. to women, um, where it says uh, women shouldn't pray or prophesy with the head uncovered. I thought, ah, oh, they are meant to pray and prophesy in church. They are meant to speak out in church, mm -hmm. but they Doesn't have to be have covered. No, it means without covering from either their husband or their spiritual father, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's, it's like the way God's mm -hmm. set things it up. it outrages the angels because yeah. the angels say oh somebody. God. That's not legitimate. We're under authority in our realm. Mm -hmm. There's someone operating in the spirit here and they're not under authority and they can't deal with it. If we, the angels mm -hmm. just get authority and demons look and go. Yeah. There's been teaching on that, didn't they? Mm -hmm. Maybe like literally I think if you notice somebody's wife preaches, so he's got a head covered mm. as well. So, yeah. Symbolically, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, so James 4 7, I'll, I'll just read it out to save time. Um, says, Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Um, so, as we submit to God, you know, that's our stand against against the devil, um, and he, he's out of there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but if you've got rebellion in your heart, it's an open door to him. And, He's got you. Um, and 1 Samuel 15, 23 says, Rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Mm. Um, so it's very, very serious. Um, and if someone could quickly find Psalm 32, verse 9. Be ye not as the horse or as the mule, which have no understanding, whose mouth must be held in with bit and bridle, mm. lest they come near unto thee. Yeah. So it's like, don't be stubborn, don't resist God. Yeah. Be, be easy to lead. <laughs> um, I'm going to go on to talk about that more later, how we all kind of need breaking in. <laughs> um, yeah, so surrender, submit and yield okay so yield means to move out of the way to let the other one pass in america you see the road signs that say yield right here it's, it's the giveaway sign and it's so you move out of the way and it's like god's saying you've been in my way you know i, I want to bless you i want to i want to prosper you i want to use you more i want to minister through you more but but you've been in my way you, you know you need to get out of the way so i can come through you um you know, it also means letting go to yield is to let go let go of your rights um let go of control um 
it's it's dying to the natural to live in the supernatural and dying to how we think and feel mm -hmm. so let it go let it go let it go <laughs> um yeah so a lot of us are control freaks yeah. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, we're panicking if, if we don't feel in control, if we haven't got things, you know, just so A, B, C in the right little boxes. But God wants to kind of trash all that, spoil, spoil all, you know, our little ordered way of doing things. <laughs> um, we, need, we need to think outside the box, you know, it's, he's so much bigger. Right, so what is the purpose of brokenness? Why do we need to be broken? Um, it's not it's not this horrible thing you know it is it is a beautiful thing and it's something that god wants to a point he wants to bring us all to um so why does god want brokenness it's because he sees a purpose and a destiny in each and every one of us we're all created by god with a purpose he's got plans and purposes for our lives that are unique to us um you know he he created us um, with that in mind, you know, from before eternity. Um, and he so desires to bless his people. It's, it's like his passion, you know, but, but we, we block him, you know, we, we, we resist him. Um, so brokenness is needed to just to take those obstacles that we have out, out of the way. You know, we, we, we have these obstacles to his ha plans and purposes and to him working in our lives. Um, and he wants to take those pieces out, you know, brick by brick and, and rebuild us. So it's things like, I mean, you can probably list them in, in your own life, you know, what, what's in the way. It's things like pride, um, independence, self-sufficiency, idolatry, self-centeredness and, and rebellion. Um, but once, you know, God's broken us and, and dealt with us, he can, he can use us, we can be an instrument for God um, you know, so I've got here breaking leads to breakthrough mm. after death comes mm. resurrection um, and you want everything in your life to be on resurrection ground to be <coughs> on new creation ground you know um, where it's, it's God that's brought it about you know, it's not it's not you that's that's brought it about but it's, it's new creation um, and it's it's got <coughs> fingerprints of God on it you know because you've relinquished control of your life to him. Um, and that takes humility, and it, is, it can be our biggest problem. And the world thinks humility is a weakness, but boy, it's not a weakness. It's like, it is the secret to, to power in God. Um, you know, God resists the proud. He gives grace to the humble. You put, his power is made perfect in weakness. It is, it is the secret. You know, he shames the... Um, the, wise the wise and uses the foolish things of this world to shame the wise when it says his power is perfected and we miss the word power is the word dunamis there which is specifically miracles the supernatural mm, right, yeah. and perfect is the word teleos which means brought to full maturity so how do we have a supernatural life it's telling you there this is how the supernatural is brought to full maturity in you through brokenness, through weakness. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Okay, so I just want to define the difference um, between a wounded heart and a broken, mm. broken heart. Um, if we could just read Psalm 147, verse 3. who heals the broken-hearted and binds up their wounds. Yeah. Um, you have to be broken first before you can be healed. Do you get that from that verse? Um, <laughs> you have to be surrendered to, to God. You have to be submitted to God. You have to have yielded your heart to God before he can heal you. How else can he work in your heart if you've not surrendered to him? Yeah, and been broken. Um, so yeah, I think I think many people do confuse what the difference between broken and wounded. But a wounded person, um, and we've all been wounded. You know, we've all carried wounds. 
um, any of us still do. A wounded person is, is someone that's damaged. You know, they've got damage from the past, they've, they've got hurt and their heart is it's infected, it's, they're messed up. You know, they might, it's like if you're carrying unforgiveness, for example, it's like poison to your spirit. Um, so there's, there's bitter waters flowing out from your heart. And, and like the Bible says, out, out of the heart, the mouth speaks. So it's, it's going to come out of your mouth. That's why you, you can never put a wounded person into leadership or into ministry. You, could, you can never lead a house of peace. You, because you, you're going to, you know, you're going to start off talking about God, but you're going to end up talking about your pain. Um, and you're going to minister out of your wound. You're going to minister poison to, to other people. Um, but brokenness is completely different. It's it's a beautiful thing. It's it's precious in the sight of God. Um, there's a there's a phrase I think Watchman Nee coined the phrase the olive olive crushed releases oil. Yeah. Um, and that's 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 the crushing that God brings. It's not it's not a crushing to destroy, but it's it's to release release beauty and it's. It is a sweet fragrance before God, like Scott was saying. It's it's a beautiful aroma, and it's it's what He's looking for. It's true worship. It's that broken and contrite heart. Um, it's pure and it's it's powerful. To, you know, on our end, it seems raw and painful, um, but it's it's what God does. Um, and I mean, from my own personal experience, um, in the presence of God. You know, I've, I've come to God with with wounds, um, and there was one occasion um, I was quite young. I was, I was at university actually, and um, with some spirit-filled Christians, and um, we kind of got away from it all. One time, we, did, we were just like we we want to just go and worship God, so we found like one of the music rooms uh, where there's a piano, and just there's about six of us, and just started playing and, and, and singing um, and I've been a Christian about two years and I, I just found myself crying 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 buckets and I couldn't stop I didn't know where it was coming from um, it was like all my pain was coming out in, in God's presence mm -hmm. and um, one of the girls there she was quite prophetic and she she came over to me and said um, God says it's like that the bitter tears that you're crying now are going to turn into like sweet tears, you know, you, you, you're crying it out, um, but that's going to turn into like like living water. Because um, what God wants, you know, like rivers of living water springing up from within us, and that's what He's after. So He'll work on our heart in His presence. Um, he know He knows the heart better than better than we do. You know, He knows, you know, like a, a heart surgeon or whatever. He knows all the different chambers of the heart. He knows how it works. Um, and when he starts touching your heart in his presence, ow, it can be really, really, really painful. And we might not want to let him do that. Well, I'm looking at a picture of a heart on the wall. That's nice. <laughs> um, uh, but we need to just su surrender before him and let, let, him, let him heal those wounds. Um, but yeah, he can, he can, only, he can only heal us if we're first broken, if we first, you know, come to him in brokenness uh, and let, just let go and let go of our pride that would stop us. Um, but it's so real and it's, it's so beautiful. Um, yeah. Oh. <laughs> quite serious. <laughs> um, so how, finally, how, how brokenness comes. Okay, so I said there's two ways that brokenness comes about. It's either um, a decision that you make on your own or, um, more commonly, God will allow a crisis. Um, he'll get you to a crisis point, um, like to get you to the end of yourself. <laughs> so where you're, you're faced with the reality of what, what a mess you are, um, what a failure you are, or what a screw up you are, you know. Um, and that's like your breaking point. It's, he, he gets you to that point. He, he, he probes you to find that point. He gets you to that point so that you'll give up and surrender. Um, 
Could someone read Hebrews 12, 5 to, 5 to 11? So the ch- chastenings of the Lord, it's, you know, it's, it's painful, but it's necessary and it's the proof that we belong to him. You know, it's the proof that we're a son or a daughter of God, um, that we don't like it at the time. You know, we, we don't like having our will crossed, yeah. <laughs> but God wants to break our will. You know, it's like, like a child. Like I think of Zoe when sometimes when you cross a will, she'll actually literally throw herself prostrate on on the ground, you know, throw, throw a big tantrum, you know. That's what we're like sometimes. Um, yeah, so we we kind of have to be broken or in like horsey language, um, broken in. I used to do horse riding <laughs> um, uh, when I was a young teenager, and um. There was this horse, right? It's called. It was called Nipper, and the reason he was called Nipper was because um, he used to like to bite you if if you give him carrots or mints or whatever. He, he used to bite you, not hard, but he used to bite you, and then he used to like throw his head back and literally laugh. <laughs> 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 um, but that was that was the horse that I always ended up <laughs> riding. Um, the first time I got on him, I think it was about eleven or twelve years old. Um, Nobody warned me, but uh, he had a complete mind of his own. I mean, he was broken in, supposedly. <laughs> um, I don't know if he was properly. Um, uh, and he just, I got I got on him, and as soon as I got on him, he just took off where he wanted to go. We were supposed to be, like, going off as a group on, like, a hack, you know, like a long a long walk. And um, he, he just took off like, and he, he headed back to his stable and put his head down in, in the stall. He just wasn't playing ball. Um, and then another time uh, we were out on a, on a hack and um, cantering along like this group of horses. And then there was some gunshot wounds, uh, gunshot wounds, gunshot sounds um, in the distance. And he just completely freaked out. All the other horses were, were okay, you know, they just stopped and stayed as a group. And he just, like, um, bolted, like, with me on him in a, in a big circle, like, freaked out completely. Um, and then threw me off at, at the other horse's legs. Um, I can't remember if he ran off after that or what, but I was really shaken. You know, he was, he was quite a crazy horse. Um, but over time, um, I kind of built a relationship with him. And, you know, he was getting, I guess, more broken in. And, um, you know, a couple of years later, uh, I went in for this Jim Carner, if you know what that is, um, with him, riding him. Um, Jim Carner's like where you do like diff- different jumps and um, it's quite controlled and quite coordinated. And, you know, you, the horse and the rider have to really work together as a team. And, um, 
and we won the Jim Khan and me and me and Nipper. Um, and it was it was amazing because he he was a really really powerful horse, and that's the point I'm trying to make. He was he was such a powerful horse, such an intelligent creature, really sparky. But um, he he had been really rebellious. Um, but he could be trained and when he was like in submission he he was brilliant you know he was he was so powerful so graceful and like oh what's it the word meek right means strength under control and family scott was scott was saying um to me the other day meek a wise one <laughs> meek means it was used in um the ancient world in like the, for horse racing um, a horse was described as being meek. Yeah, when it's like broken in. It's broken. Um, yeah. And we inherit, we come into our inheritance. Yeah, the only the meek can inherit the earth. Mm. So, um, yeah, so, um, so worship, I mean, Scott's already said this, this is why I said he, he stole my stuff. Um, <laughs> you didn't answer yours. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're, we're one, aren't we? So. Um, yeah, there's, there's no there's no worship without a sacrifice and the sacrifice God wants is your heart say mm. your heart on the altar whatever condition it's in so whatever mess it might be in um, we give him our heart and he, he deals with our, our heart and that's you know in the presence of God that's that's so precious that's why like you go tell Ray Jesus and everyone's crying <laughs> but it's in the presence of God and I, I love that I love it when I see people crying God's presence um, so yeah, because God, God's after our hearts, um, and His His fire and His glory falls on that where He sees that sacrifice, where He smells that that aroma going up to Him, that true worship. His His fire comes down. So I just want to exhort us to like get real, get really raw before God in our worship. Um, you know, we're not just we're not just singing songs. Um, we're bringing our hearts before Him. Um, Lamentations 2.19 says, pour out your heart before him like water. Mm. So, you know, just let it all out mm. in his presence. You know, he, he sees it anyway, but he, he knows when we surrender to him, when we open ourselves to him. Um, you know, and the broken heart he'll not despise, but, mm. you know, outward form of worship. He, do, he does despise because it's empty. Um, so he's, he's after that heart-to-heart -heart relationship with us. Um, and I'd like to sing a song, if you don't mind, Sam. <laughs> um.